Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So, we're going to be talking about more on the cheesy fan. This guy right here with all these bifiler coils. The last video, if you have not watched it, you should go watch it. Um, I said I was going to do a certain amount of things and I did those with the three-dimensional filer style configuration and it didn't really change very much. Uh, two reasons for that. One could be that the coil alignment is actually not very accurate so they pretty well average out. Or two, the fact that by having that particular amount of overlap in different areas um, actually balance itself out. So even though this one might be twice as much, this one is half, where before it was just a one-to-one -one ratio, so to speak. So it's a balancing act. However, there's other things that I wanted to try. That's what this video is about. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, please go back and watch the last video, because this is going to be a continuation of that video. So, um, let me show you the data. So here's the data. This is what it looks like configured in these certain ways okay and you can see that all the data is really 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 comparable here that's uh, using the um, LRC meter but today what I want to show you is something else that we um, discovered along the way now even though this is wired a little bit differently the result can still be shown so let me go ahead and show you some other really interesting things about this coil so this is what I just showed you. All these coils are hooked in some fashion of series. Most of them hooked back to back. So coil 1 to coil 2, coil 2 to coil 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, and so on. However, there's another configuration which I thought should result in a higher impedance and a lower uh, resonant frequency. And uh, that proves to be true, and so I'm going to explain to you kind of what I did. Uh, instead of hooking coil 1 to coil 2 and 2 to 3 and 3 to 4, I've interweaven the bifilers. So now coil 1 is actually connected to coil 12, and then coil 12 back to coil 1 on the secondary filer, and then 12 to 2, 2 to 13, 13 to 2, 2 to 13, 13 to 3, and so forth and so on. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a maximum difference in potential. Okay, and you can see that even though these measurements here are relatively close to these measurements here, the strange thing or the, uh, the thought that I had should be that the impedance should go up and the self-resonant -reson frequency should go down, even though the internal self-capacitance and self-inductance are relatively the same. And that proves to be true, so I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now. So these are still configured in the original configuration, not 3D, 3D filer, but just regular filer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, and actually these are coils 26 through 50. These are coils tw uh, 1 through 25. And then so 1 through 25 is on the top? No, on the bottom. 1 through 25 is on the bottom, and 26 through 50 is on the top. So what I've done here is I'm going to use the impedance analyzer that we've used in the last one here. And I'm going to show you what happens when we use the impedance analyzer with this circuit over here open. Because this circuit being open still influences what's going on with this circuit here, which is very interesting. So I'm going to do two things in this video. I'm going to show you how they affect each other. I'm going to show you what happens when I short one out or short the other out. Then I'm going to show you uh, the equivalent of the impedance analyzer result on the oscilloscope by using the ring test that I like to do. So again, all these things have been taught in the past videos that I published, so I'm not going to go into the details of those. You can go back and watch the search for answer videos and the Newman series videos, and they'll, yeah, it's a lot of videos, but you'll cover all the things that I'm describing here, and the pinnacle of understanding what I'm doing here is based upon all that research. So let's jump on over to the impedance analyzer. Um, I'm going to explain to you what I'm going to do while looking at the impedance analyzer um, screen. All so, right, so real quickly, um, I'm going to do these tests one at a time, showing you each setup so that you can see what's going on. One really quick important thing is when we do the ring test, uh, you'll notice that the frequency is slightly different the than the impedance analyzer. That is because of the probes 
they have capacitance and resistance and they interfere with the actual real frequency of the system by itself isolated. So I'm going to kind of show you that, kind of make you understand that's why there's a little phase shift between the analyzer and the oscilloscope for the ring test. So the first thing we're going to do is just this one right here. Just that connected, this one open. Let's go run the analyzer and see what result we get. Okay, so I've ran the analyzer and you can see it basically has a peak right here um, somewhere around uh, 3400 or so but then there's another little peak right here right around the uh, oh, 1150 mark or so so if I go over here and look at the uh, f uh, the phase shift you can see that that's true for the phase shift as well so this is inductance this is considered capacitance and it tries to come back towards inductance and it goes back towards capacitance so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually short out all right, this other coil. So we're going to short this one out. Like I said, I can disconnect this completely. It doesn't change anything, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So now I've shorted out this coil here, and this one's still connected to the analyzer. And we're going to run it again here. So we'll start the sweep. And what we should see is an influence. However, what the result is, is that we've completely removed this secondary peak, and we're only measuring this lower peak. Okay, so now the frequency is uh, about five, 5 kilohertz or so, which is rather interesting. We've only got one peak here. Okay, and over here on the... Uh, phase shift you can see what it looks like so now we'll do the opposite we're gonna put this here analyzer is now across these that are in series and this one is left open start the sweep and we'll do this on the uh, ring test here in a minute but first we'll just do them one at a time on the analyzer Okay, so now you can see the primary peak is actually here. It's about uh, 11, a little above 1150, like 1175, something like that. Well, I guess that's, uh, uh, yeah, maybe my numbers were a little off earlier, but you see where the peak is at now. And then you still have this secondary small peak in the front. And if we look at the, uh, the analyzer, you can see that we go from inductance and then we go down here into capacitance, back to inductance, then to capacitance. So it's a very, very unique looking uh, phase shift result there. Now what we're going to do is short out this one. We're going to run the analyzer again and see what the result is, see what the primary peak is. So there you go, seems like the primary peak is the higher the higher frequency peak so these are very interesting results because what what this means is that when we do a ring test because we see two peaks we should actually see those two peaks so that's what we're going to do right now we're going to disconnect the analyzer we're basically going to take this 9 volt battery all right we're going to connect just connect the positive here we're going to take our positive lead. I'm actually going to get it inside there so I can use the clip all the time. There we go. Take our negative lead and we're going to connect it here. Okay. And then I'm just going to take the other side of the 9 volt battery. Okay. And I'm going to tap it. Boop. Right there. We're going to get our ring out of the system. And then we're going to short it out and then we're going to switch it just like we did before. So let's get a shot of the uh, oscilloscope here. All right, so we're going to try this. Uh, see how it works. There we go. Let's uh, let's try it one more time. Sometimes we can get a better uh, a better trace that I'm looking for. There we go. Okay. So because of the voltages I'm using, sometimes it doesn't always work perfectly. 
But if we look here, we'll take our cursors, kind of zoom in on this ringing waveform, and we can actually see that there are two peaks right there. So the first peak to the second peak is roughly 12.5 kilohertz and the main peak to the main peak is about 3.74 so if we looked at our analyzer results we can see that they're really close to that exact value in fact let's just put the analyzer back on there with the scope probes and everything connected the way they are let's run it again and let's take a quick look at what it is okay so you can see that the predominant peak is the lower frequency peak which is what we're seeing right now about 3.7 kilohertz and then the other small peak is um, not as predominant and it's about 12.2 which is uh, a little less than what we see on our analyzer but um, you know due to some error here and there I presume you can definitely see though that there are two peaks going on so if we take off the analyzer and we short this coil out okay now we're going to do another ring test alright now we're gonna go to the peak of that one the peak of this one it's about 4.85 kilohertz Could probably get a better measurement if we uh, get a little closer we'll say 4.8 so now what we'll do is we'll stick the analyzer back on there we'll run that again and we'll determine if that's the same result that we have here and there you go looks like the uh, frequency is pretty darn close 4.8 is not quite 5 we can look here see where it about crosses over so in fact that uh, that does appear to be uh, correct so it's kind of interesting that you can do the ring test and see what's going on and how the different coils interact with each other so let's go ahead and do the other side now we're going to do exactly the opposite well, doing the same thing we did earlier we're going to switch our probes I'll just leave the positive on there that's okay now we're going to connect over here and we're also going to be doing the ring test from over there so this coil is open now let's go ahead and just see what the analyzer so running the analyzer let's see what it looks like so now we've got a um, a predominant peak here somewhere around uh, I don't know 1100 and then this one here looks again to be about three three thousand four hundred or somewhere thereabouts so let's see what the ring test shows us alright that's much more much more pronounced you can really see that waveform now being deformed so let's see if it matches what we were doing okay so there's there's the two small peaks about 12.2 kilohertz and if we measure a big peak to big peak we get about 3.5 kilohertz so those results seem to be good now we'll go ahead and just uh, short this one out okay so now we've got the analyzer across this one we're going to short that one out let's run the analyzer and see what it does okay so now uh, it appears the analyzer is showing us just a little above uh, 10,000 10 kilohertz. We'll do our rain test again. Let's see what it shows. That full, that full peak. You can see that that beginning peak there. That's kind of uh, or all all of that noise in the beginning. That's actually a spark. Let's just take the the ring down over here and kind of see see what the result is. So it's uh, really close to 10 kilohertz. 
almost spot on 10 kilohertz, which is what our which which is what our analyzer showed. So you know it's kind of nice to be able to compare things and see how the coils interact with each other. It is kind of different the way that these coils interact with each other with these shorted. When I had both of these set up the same, where this one was the same as that one, interestingly enough, um, the result was very different and very strange. So that's one reason why I'm you know trying to film this. Kids in the background, sorry about that. Just the way it is around here. So yeah, there you go. That's how I'm trying to do an analysis on here. And uh, it's interesting that I can go from this right here with the same amount of inductance capacitance to the same amount of inductance capacitance, but the actual self-resonant frequency of these 24 coils is only about 3.4 kilohertz, where this one is up into the 12, um, 12 kilohertz, somewhere in that range. So it's, it's a dramatic difference just by wiring them differently, even though the inductance capacitance on the LRC meter here are pretty well the same. And that's the importance of how I've got the bifilers configured and the reason why I wanted to make this complex bifiler system is because I actually wanted to take the maximum difference in potential across the different places. So now I'm gonna intermix this one with this one and then we're gonna get even higher or I should say even lower self um, resonant frequencies. The goal here is to get low enough to get into the rotational RPM. By the way, this rotor is locked so it can't turn while doing these tests. Alright, so I'm editing uh, this piece of video in after uh, all the rest, so this may look slightly different, but basically I forgot to measure across the whole entire coil here. So same setup as the rest of this video, I just am now measuring across this entire coil set, which is all in series now. Um, so the, what we're going to look at is two things we're going to look at again, the impedance analyzer and the oscilloscope. And so if you look right here on the uh, impedance analyzer, you'll see that we've got a peak around uh, 3,500 or so. And it's a pretty big peak. And then we've got a smaller peak around uh, 11,000 kilohertz. So 3.5 kilohertz and 11,000 uh, 11, kilohertz. So if we jump on over to the oscilloscope, 11 kilohertz. Oh, yeah, Richard's correcting me, 11, 11 kilohertz, correct. So if we jump over here to the oscilloscope, we can see the uh, double ring again that we've got here. And if we look at the, uh, the primary or the large amplitude frequency that's ringing, it's about 3.54 kilohertz. And if we go to the smaller amplitude ring frequency, you can see it's approximately around 11 kilohertz, 10, 10.87 here, 11 kilohertz. So it looks like uh, that's correct. There it is, 11.11. .11. So what's interesting about this is um, if you look at the impedance analyzer again, you can see that the amplitude of the lower frequency is higher than the other frequency. I'll also show you the impedance uh, phase angle because that's also important. So there's the impedance phase angle. And then if you go back to the oscilloscope, we can see that the ring slowly dies off. And as it dies off, the primary or the large amplitude impedance is the one that is dominant. So there is uh, sometimes occasions where I do the ring test here and it doesn't even show the double frequency, which is kind of weird. That has to do with something, how it's being generated or how it's being measured or whatever the case may be. So yeah, that's all of them uh, in series together. So let's jump back to the, uh, the other part of this video. All right, well that concludes today's experiment. Um, we'll continue doing uh, a lots more testing here, but obviously the goal is to get a very low self-resonant frequency. I want to operate in that range as I believe Newman was also doing, but I wanted to do it elegantly by using the bifiler coils that I can actually intermix not only one coil to the next, but one coil to a coil way down here where now the voltage potential coming back is much greater than it would be if just stacked together. Now I gotta be careful, obviously I can short these coils out. That's another reason I made it modular. I can disconnect one of these coils. I can just cut it out of there or pull it out of there. Putting a new one back is a little tricky the way I've got everything set up. But yeah, that's the end of today. Uh, thanks for watching. God bless you guys. Read the Bible more and enjoy the children in the background. The trampoline's really in the wrong spot. Oh well.
Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.